Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? This morning, we're going to be reading out of John 17, 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. I believe I mentioned this particular verse, what, yesterday, day before, a couple days ago, something like that. I kid you not, I don't read ahead. These, these come up automatically in this app. I, I don't read ahead. So... I just mentioned that in relation to something else. And here we are on that very exact same verse that reads, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. So when we get saved, he doesn't take us automatically. Just remove us and we're gone. I think it was yesterday I talked about this. or had alluded to this verse. He protects from the evil one through this life so that we can finish this life. So let's go up here. This is a prayer of Jesus. <clears throat> it's a long prayer. Starting verse 9. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be as one as we are. Or may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the word has and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. You ever wonder why it seems like the world hates you? Now you know. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also, and here's, here's us, we're being mentioned in this prayer, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That's us. That's you and me that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Pretty simple, pretty basic, but nonetheless powerful. The Lord himself prayed for us. He knew what the world was going to bring. He had already been there and seen all that stuff. He knew what was going to happen. And so he lifted us up in prayer. That we wouldn't falter, that we wouldn't fail, that we wouldn't stumble. Because he knew the closer we got to the end, Especially after what happened 2,000 years ago, Satan was like, whoa, I just made a huge mistake. He tricked me. <laughs> made me give him exactly what he wanted. Because Satan wanted to stop him. Okay, I'm going to kill him. He didn't realize killing him was exactly what he was supposed to do. He inspired those men to put Jesus on the cross. So Jesus knew... He's going to go pull out all the stops trying to do every every bit of damage he can to the church. And the sat and Satan has done that <laughs> to a great degree. And so the Lord prayed for us because he knew how bad things would be. Now look at the church today. Look at the state of the church today. It's terrible. If you guys ever look at, um, ever seen Jesse Lee Peterson's videos on YouTube from the YouTube channel, The Fallen State, that's the state of the church. Or the, it's the fallen state for the most part. There's just a, a remnant that's hanging on. It is a sweet and blessed event, which will occur to all believers in God's own time, 
the going home to be with Jesus. You guys know there's two opportunities. One is our appointed time. Our appointed time that this life comes to an end for us. The other is the rapture. But it is a sweet and blessed event. Which will occur to all believers in God's own time. The going home to be with Jesus. In a few more years, the Lord's soldiers, who are now fighting the good fight of faith, will have done with conflict and have entered into the joy of their Lord. But although Christ prays that his people may eventually be with him where he is, he does not ask that they may be taken at once away from this world to heaven. He wishes them to stay here. Yet how frequently does the wearied pilgrim put up the prayer, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest? I think most of us agree with that, that we would rather fly away. But Christ does not pray like that. He leaves us in his Father's hands until, like shocks of corn fully ripe, we shall each be gathered into our Master's garner. Jesus does not plead for our instant removal by death. For to abide in the flesh is needful for others, if not profitable for ourselves. And I mentioned that the other day too. You know, we're we're here living this life because others need us. They need to see the light. They need to see the example. They need to see the, the hands of the Lord working in his people. They need to hear the word and hear it spread because unbelievers aren't going to do it. And so if all the believers are taken at the moment of salvation, what, what good is that to the world? And so we're here living out our lives for a purpose. He asks that we may be kept from evil, but he never asks for us to be admitted to the inheritance and glory till we are full are of full age. Christians often want to die when they have any trouble. Ask them why, and they tell you, because we would be with the Lord. We fear it. We fear it is not so much because they are longing to be with the Lord as because they desire to get rid of their troubles. Else they would feel the same wish to die at other times when not under the pressure of trial. And he makes a great point. And how many of us want to, to go be with the Lord just to escape all these issues we're going under? Or how many of us want to be with the Lord just because we want to be with the Lord? And we have to be honest with ourselves. For a long time, my, my uh, motivation behind it was to get away from issues, to get away from the trials, get away from the pain. And now it's just, I would just rather be with him. This life doesn't hold as much attraction to for me as it does knowing that I'm going to go and stay with the Lord. But I have come to the realization that I have to finish this life. Whatever that looks like, whatever that's going to be, I have to finish it. They want to go home, not so much for the Savior's company as to be at rest. Now, it is quite right to desire to depart if we can do it in the same spirit that Paul did, because to be with Christ is far better. But the wish to escape from trouble is a selfish one. That's, that's true. Rather, let your care and wish be to glorify God by your life here as long as he pleases. Remember what I've been going on and on about? Glorify God with this life. He literally just said that right there. Rather, let your care and wish be to glorify God by your life. Evidence of salvation. Here, as long as he pleases, even though it be in the midst of toil and conflict and suffering, and leave him to say when it is enough. Leave it in the Lord's hands to say, this one's coming home. That's enough. They've, they've endured enough. It, 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 their time's up. Or the rapture comes. It's time to get everybody. And he comes and the dead in Christ are reunited with their bodies that are now glorified. They leave. And the Lord says, all of y'all, let's go get in the truck. We're out of here. Y'all get on the bus. We're going home. The train home. But what he says is true. He makes very valid points there. You know, a lot of people want to go because they're just tired of dealing with stuff here. They don't want to face responsibilities. I, I will 100% admit, to the fullest, that's where my heart was. I was tired of this life. I'm tired of all the nonsense. I've been that way for ages and ages. I've told you guys before, there was about an eight-year time frame where just about every morning when I woke up, the first thing I said when I woke up was, Lord, if today, if it's all right with you today, 
If the, and today's the day I'd, I'd like to be taken today. You can take my life. I was tired of it. Tired of the fight. Tired of always failing. Tired of, of constantly beating my head against the wall. And as recently as just five years ago, I was just like, I'm, I'm tired of being in pain. I'm tired of going downhill. I'm tired of this constant issues. It just never seems like there's no, no movement forward. Then it changed. Because then I realized that getting away from the pain, it, it, it's, it, that, that is all irrelevant. Because none of that matters to what's going to be waiting on the other side. What is the point of going to heaven? <laughs> it's to be with the Lord. It's to be reunited with the Lord that saved us. The head and the body come together and become one again. It's to see him in his glory. Now, we still have a little bit of selfishness. I mean, who wants to be in pain all the time? I am in pain all the time. I don't want to be in pain all the time. I mean, nobody wants to be in pain all the time. There's nothing fun about it. There's nothing glorifying about it. I mean, it, it doesn't benefit me in any way as far as this life is concerned. However, I have since learned that this pain, these issues do help me on the other side. They do correlate to something because your suffering has value to God. They do correlate to something on the other side. And so if I have to stay here and suffer more, it is to the glory of God. It is to the honor of Jesus Christ. And it is to my blessing to do so. Because I get to speak his name. I get to glorify him. I get to praise him here on the earth. You know, if there's nobody praising God on the earth, what's the purpose of the earth? It's all over the Bible. If there's nobody here to praise you. What good is it? And so it's a good thing that we're still here. It's a good thing that we continue to praise the Lord here. Because when we're gone, what's left? Judgment. The restrainer is holding back. Just as much as it's holding back evil from doing what it wants to do, it's holding back God from doing what he's, he wants to do. Not that, not that he's being held back against his will. He's being held back by choice. The restrainer is here. The Lord's not going to pass judgment yet. When the restrainer is removed, we read this in, in Thessalonians, when the restrainer is removed, then judgment comes. Then all those, those things are released to do what they desire to do. We'll be gone. Who's the restrainer? And I tell anybody who disagrees with a preacher rapture, who's the restrainer? And they dodge the question. Tell me who the restrainer is. You, you, we figure out who the restrainer is. We know when the rapture is going to happen. The restrainer is the Holy Spirit. Where's the Holy Spirit residing right now? In the believer. We're holding it back. And so none of these things are going to happen until the appointed time. Every time a believer leaves this earth, when their appointed time comes, another, another several, sometimes several believers fill the spot. So the Lord always has people declaring his glory here on this earth, no matter what the day brings, no matter what's happening in society. And those believers, when they reach a certain point in their development as a Christian, come to that place where they're like, you know what? I'd rather be with the Lord. At first, it's selfish reasons. And then later they realize, you know what, even though I, I do want to escape this pain, I want to be in heaven for him. I want to see the throne room. I want to see God on his throne, the ancient of days. I want to see Jesus in his glory. Take that scroll. Break those seals. I want to see him in his glorious return. Riding in with him on a white horse. Our desire starts to change. Our motivations, motivation starts to change. Sure, it'd be great to not have any more pain, to not have to struggle anymore, to not have to fight anymore, especially if you've gone through a life where you've done a lot of it, especially if most of your life was that. But what do those things do? They make you stronger. They, they make you look at things differently and think about things differently. They make you respond to things differently. Those things prepare you for whatever may be next. But they also prepare us for heaven. And what's waiting for us, the glory that awaits us, will be the result of all that, those things. And so if we have to stay here and finish this life, by all means, Lord. But Lord, make me to glorify you in some way while I'm still here. 
so that the rest of this life as a believer is not wasted. That there's something that develops out of it. See, the Lord will bear fruit through us. He is the branch. We are the vine. We only bear fruit because we are attached to him. So he bears the fruit through us. You take a, like a, down here, these Mustang grapes, they get a big old thick trunk on them, almost like a tree. And you take and you go cut all the vines off. The vines die. The trunk grows new vines and produces fruit. So it's the trunk, it's the it's the core of it that, that produces the fruit. It just uses the branches to show that fruit. So the Lord is the one that produces the fruit through us. So while we're here, he produces fruit. What would that fruit look like? Doing good for others. Growing in our own sanctification. Um, leading others to Christ. Sharing the truth. On and on and on. So while we're here, it's beneficial. Not only to us, because we grow in Christ. We grow in love. We grow in understanding. But it's beneficial to him too, because then the word gets preached. He becomes glorified in the earth among his people. See, there's a lot going on on the other side that we don't we don't understand because we don't see it. But what we do here relates to something on the other side. The Bible makes that very evident. And so us staying here on the earth has a great effect elsewhere and leads to something much grander. And when we get to heaven, we'll see that. And so it's good for us to be here. Do we want to leave? Absolutely. Lord, I'd rather be with you. What has this life got for me? So, And a lot of times, and I know a lot of you guys are in this state, a lot of times you feel like there's nothing you can do. Lord, by the way, before I forget, thank you for the rain. A lot of times you're like, what can I do for the Lord? What am I doing for the Lord? Why is he keeping me alive if I'm not able to do anything for him? But you are. The fact that you're here, still alive, is a testament to the grace of God. And if you're able to speak to but one person, and that person says, you know what? I get it. And they believe. That one person coming to faith in Jesus Christ is worth an entire lifetime of troubles. That one opportunity and somebody hears those words and believes and you led them to the Lord and the Lord saved them. That it has more value than an, than an entire wasted lifetime. If it, every one of us could lead but one person to the Lord for salvation or bring a brother or sister who has fallen away back, that, that's worth a whole lifetime of suffering. And so it's good for us to be here because there's a lot to do. We just don't realize it. And our perspective is very limited. We only see from one perspective, ours. God sees from all perspectives. And so it's good for us to be here. It's right for us to be here, to finish out this life, to produce fruit for the Lord so that we go home and we have a triumphal entry into heaven. Jesus is providing that for us. Does the Lord take some quickly after being saved? Sure. He knows the future. He knows where that path is going to go. He knows what's inside them, what their desires are. And some people are marked out for other stuff. It may be that person's marked out for something completely different in heaven. And so the Lord takes them immediately. Others, he leaves for a long, long time. I've, I've seen comments of people who have been a believer for like 75 years. That's a long time to follow the Lord. And they've been watching this whole time. So don't get discouraged because you're still here and there's a lot of stuff going on. Instead, be encouraged. The very fact that you're here and there's stuff going on shows the Lord favors you. Because he's keeping you here to share with others, to be a living example to others. And it just may be. You're about to have a conversation with somebody and they're going to believe because of you. Because of your example. Could be there's a whole bunch of people watching that may believe because of that. And if that's the case and that person 
crosses over the whole lifetime of troubles and pain and struggles and desires to leave the whole lifetime is worth it if even one person can be saved and so our life won't be futile the life lived here won't be without you know won't be just a life of regret because it'll be a life lived preparing us for something much greater that's the plan of the lord it's in the scriptures and once we come to realize that, once we come to know that, okay, Lord, I trust you. You're keeping me alive for a reason. There's no reason why I should be alive. You're keeping me alive for a reason. Lord, make me to operate within what you have said. Make me to do your will at the time when it comes. And the whole time I'm here, that I may live to glorify you, just like he said in the devotion. I may live to glorify you. Because the whole world sees it. They know who we are. They know where we are. Don't you think for one second the world doesn't know who you are or where you are? The powers that be, if they ever had the free hand to come and collect all the Christians, each and every one of us is going to jail because they know where we are. They know where to get us. Right now, the restrainer is holding them back. They can't touch us unless they're given permission to do so. So we're here for a reason. We're here to be an example. Let's keep doing what the Lord has given us to do. Whether it's in our home, in our workplace, here on YouTube, social media, wherever it is. In, in our prayer closet, being a prayer warrior, whatever it is. In, any of those things, we glorify the Lord. So let's keep doing that. Because he is worthy of our praise and our glory and our worship. And as long as there is a voice singing out the praises of the Lord here on this earth, judgment will not come. It is when the voices stop, that's when judgment comes. And so it's good for the world that we're still here singing praises to the Lord, yet they don't realize it. Because if we were all gone, if we were all silenced, their destruction comes more quickly. So it's to their benefit that we're still here. It's to our benefit that we're still here. It's to the benefit of God and Jesus Christ that we're still here. So even though we desire to leave, don't think too negatively on being left here. Don't look down upon the life you've been given. Do the best you can with it. And put it in the Lord's hands. Say, Lord, my life is yours. Use it as you will. What would you have me do? And wait and watch to see what kind of example he uses you to be. Because that will relate to something much grander in heaven than you could ever realize. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word, and thank you for this devotion. Again, more confirmation of what we've already been talking about. Your prayer, Lord, has sent shockwaves throughout time. Your prayer saying, I don't want you to take them out of the world, Father. I want you to keep them in the world, but just protect them. And in, in, our, in our growth, we come to places where we become very selfish. I, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm tired of this. I was there for many years. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, I don't know, understand what the purpose of this is. But then you bring us to a place where we do understand the purpose. We do realize what's going on, and it changes our desires. It changes our motivation. Lord, I don't want to leave because I'm tired of this life now. I want to leave. Those are part of the reasons, but mainly I want to leave because I want to be with you. To be here is good for everyone else, and I can grow. But to be there with you is even better. And Paul made that clear. To live is good, to die is gain. So for us to be here is good for us, good for you, good for the world. But to go is even better because then we get to be with you forever. And we have to always remember, and I pray that you always keep this in remembrance of us. Once we leave this earth, that's forever. So let's utilize the time while we're here. Let's maximize what we can get out of this life while we're here because this is the only life we're going to get. The next one is an eternal life somewhere else. So Lord, make us to glorify you as much as we can in this life here. Make us to be a blessing to those around us as much as possible for your glory. Make us to share the truth, to share the word, to glorify you in preaching the truth of the gospel, 
to as many people as we can, if at all possible. Right now, it's hard to because a lot of doors are closed. But Lord, we can pray for them and make us to do that. And make us to worship you and glorify you and praise you while we're here on this earth. Until that time comes that you can come and you re receive your church unto yourself. Or until our appointed time to die comes. Whichever comes first. Either way, Lord, you win, we win. Those that we've lived a life around wins. And if we could just get one person, just one person, to see the light and believe, and they go to heaven with us, oh, this whole life is worth it. This whole life has value if we can get even one person to believe. Amazing. So Lord, make us to do that according to your will. Make us to, to be that way because it's good to, to do those things. It's good to be that kind of person. It's good to do it your way. So make us to do that. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. But it's worth it if even one person changes. It's worth it if you can be glorified by this life. You're worthy of that. More than worthy. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. This life is rough, especially when you get older, especially if you have health issues. It's everything is a struggle. But what is that compared to heaven? Just like we talked the last few days. What is that struggle compared to heaven? Live your life. Live your life and enjoy what you have in this life. Solomon said that in Ecclesiastes, you know, eat your bread and drink your wine. Enjoy this life. God has already accepted your works. There's a lot of insinuations there. But what we're supposed to do is not worry about those things. We have no control over them. I have no control over what I'm going to do today. I don't even know what I'm going to do today. I'm putting it all in the hands of the Lord. So as we're here, while we're here, as we're still living this life, let's do that. Lord, I put my life in your hands. What do you want me to do? And if nothing, then I, may I glorify you verbally with prayer. May I live in, as an example of a, of a true born-again believer for any and all to see. Because in the end, no one's going to have an excuse. Because when they stand there and they try to say, oh, well, I didn't know. You're going to be one of the people that the Lord's going to have as a group stand. They're going to see all these people right here. Yeah, I sent all these people to you. You have no excuse. And he'll show all the people that were sitting there. Look at all these people. Nobody will have an excuse. So let's keep living like we know we're supposed to, according to the word. Let's keep doing what the Lord has given us to do, whatever that may be. Let's keep glorifying him in any way we can. Be that prayer, be that a life lived, whatever it is. Go to the Bible. It tells you what to do. Do it. Do that. Simple. And let the world see it. Don't hide your, your light. Don't put it under a bushel, but instead put it up on the bushel so the whole world can see it. Be the salt of the earth. Stand up for what's right. Stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. Be a truth teller. Be a person of extreme integrity. And when they come against you and they're wrong, stand your ground on what you know to be true. Tell them the truth. And always glorify the Lord with prayer. We keep doing that. We're serving the Lord while we're here. And whatever else the Lord puts in our path to do, we serve him. Until that time comes, we go home and then we serve him at home forever. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.